in my video, The Swiss Beast World Government from last week. I explained to you how the Swiss Escher family from Zurich were slave drivers in the Americas who owned slave ships, got filthy rich in the textile industry through the cotton pickers and therefore needed a bank. So they founded the Swiss Nazi bank, Credit Suisse. And here's part two about this Swiss slave driver family from Zurich using concentration camp slaves, which the Nazis freely provided to the Swissies. Once a slave driver, always a slave driver. Switzerland is such a clean, neutral, and innocent country, aren't they now? And oni soit qui mal y pense, shame to those who think bad about it, like Homie Ross, who got destroyed by the Swissies because he thought bad about it. Oni soit qui mal y pense, the slogan and the motto of the infamous Order of the Garter that comes out of Swaziland and their Knights Templars and the new Knights Templar horizontal system. So here it says, Oni soit qui mal y pense, which is an old French and it means shame to those who think bad about it. So which is already a warning in itself. So for their very lucrative textile industry with totally free of charge cotton coming from their various slave plantations, making these lovely Swiss traditional clothes, Swiss nationalistic flags called Eidgenossisch and other typical Swiss wavery products like traditional Swiss fol folkloric costumes, Swiss traditional curtains, traditional Swiss beddings, all provided by the traditional Swiss slavery from the Americas. It needed, therefore, a wavery line. So, the Swiss slavery banking Nazi family, Escher von Glas, founded, therefore, in 1805, the Escher V's textile spinning factory by Hans Kaspar Escher, together with Solomon von Weiss, the latter also being an aristocratic name with the von part in it. And also Escher's name is fully aristocratic because the full name of this Swiss dynasty is Escher vom Glas, as in Switzerland, the long aristocratic names mostly disappeared because of the Knights Templars' horizontal rule, who founded Switzerland in 1291, making it the first an oldest New World Order democracy in the world. So we're still talking here about that Escher family that founded the Swiss Nazi bank Credit Suisse that now went bankrupt because of their criminal transactions with Vladimir Putin 
the Russian oligarchs, all sorts of mafiosi, crooked aristocrats, and the Swiss secret or Swiss secrets, huge banking scandal of February the 20th, 2022. So here it says, Switzerland's traditional textile industry. So here you see a Swiss slave ship by the Escher family, and they're hanging up some Nubians who didn't want to obey probably. And why should they obey to the Swissies? Me too, I didn't want to obey, yeah. And here you see this fabulous Swiss traditional clothing, the folkloristic Swiss clothing of the same era during the slavery times in the Americas. So these pictures here to the left and here to the right, it all fits together. When this was happening here, the Swissies, they had, they were wearing this sort of traditional folkloric clothes. Here you can see the Swiss flag. Here you see this long Swiss flute in the Alps here. A little handbag, you know, like the pharaohs and the all, all these ancient pictures. They even have the little handbag, you know, as all pharaohs do, you know, which is quite a mystery, actually. So, well, this is lovely, neutral, innocent Swaziland, isn't it? And this infamous Escher family. So here is that company, Escher Vs and Company from Wikipedia here. And uh, so remember Escher, that's the same family that founded this Swiss Nazi bank, um, Credit Suisse, and who was keeping slaves in the Americas. Right? So I'll read it for you here, history. The company was founded as Escher Vs and Company in 1805 by Hans Kaspar Escher, there he is, and Salomon von Wies. After having originally started the company as a textile spinning business, as I just explained to you, the two expanded the enterprise to include a machine shop that manufactured textile machinery, water wheels, water turbines, power transmission equipment, and starting in 1835, ships including boilers and steam engines. And here during World War II, about which later on I will explain you more, but I'll read this here, so because I'm just having this uh, site here. So here the company also manufactured the hydraulic systems of hydroelectric plants. During World War II, the company was a supplier for the German war effort, manufacturing turbines for Norsk Hydro and supplying flamethrowers, flamethrowers. There you go. I will explain you more about it later on. And oh yeah, here it says, additionally, the com company was an integral part of researching and developing turbines to produce heavy water for the creation of nuclear weapons for the Nazis. Okay, that's what Swissy and the family Escher was working on. Nuclear weapons and flamethrowers and whatnot. So there he is, that guy who founded the Escher Wies uh, company, yeah, Hans Kaspar Escher. And um, here he is. Take a look at the picture. Look at his big and long nose, which is really aristocratic of the pharistocracy, just as the huge nose of Pharaoh Ramses the Great, the, the biggest pharaoh of all times, or King Louis the Fourteenth. If you look at profile of Louis the Fourteenth, you'll see the same thing. So it's not the jaywalkers with noses like that. And if they have it, some jaywalkers, then it means they are from the jaywalker nobility, you know, like Rothschild and Baron von Rothschild and this uh, 
the guy who had this castle and uh, who um, who had um, Hermann Göring living in his castle, the uh, the big fat Nazi. Eh? And sometimes jaywalkers just have a big nose like this, but it's very rare. If they just have the um, the genetics through rape by the pharaohs, eh? just as they did with the Europeans. So the aristocracy always have these long noses. Putin has it as well. Just go and have a look, you know. And just have a look at the physics, you know. So it says here, it, I could only find it in German, but it doesn't matter. I'll translate it for you. So here it says the the Escher, this family, comes out of the family here, Escher from Glass. And as you can already see, I, I show it a little bit more later, uh, this is the nobility. Uh, the, you know, all these double names, Escher from Glass, you know, they have a coat of arms, a crest. So this is the nobility. And because Switzerland became a horizontal rule, you know, they sort of disappeared, you know, they, they kept a low profile, the whole aristocracy. And um, it seems that they just uh, tended, you know, to get, you know, normal names, you know, like Escher here, and just leaving the rest like here from, from Glass, you know. And he uh, founded the, uh, that company um, uh, here, Escher Wies. Uh, about which I just um, talked about here, together with the banker, here it says, the banker, bankier, that means banker in Germany, in German, Salomon von Wies, that's another aristocrat with the von part, like here. So this means, you know, as I've been telling you, the whole banking industry, all the big companies, slavery, you name it, Nazism, it's all in the hands of the aristocracy and the aristocracy they come from pharaoh i mean i'm giving you all the proofs here they're all they're all from the nobility they all got these double names with von von they're, they're keeping the the world's biggest nazi banks like um uh, credit suisse they're working with the nazis on the atom bomb and everything keep slavery they have kept the european peoples the white race for into slavery for the last 2,000 years by the Romans and, and by the, the feudal system by the kings. They did the same thing with the Nubians, with the American Indians, only the American Indians, you know, they, they just kept on hunting and they, they just ran away. And they, they just, they, they couldn't use them for slavery, you know. They did the same thing with the Chinese, with, with all of us, you know. Well, of course, with the jaywalkers who were the first who were kept in slavery. So we must understand all this, what I'm explaining to you all here. So, and here's the other guys, Solomon von Wies, with whom the other guy uh, here, Hans Kaspar Escher, Escher von Glas, with whom he founded this um, very dangerous um, a Nazi company working on the atom bomb and, and a wavery, you know, with all the uh, the stolen cotton using slaves and all that, you know. And it says here, you know, he was also in politics. They were really high up in politics, just like the Salomon von Wies here, it says. He was in politics here, the Kantonsrat, the Großrat here. Rat, it means the, um, the council, you know. Uh, very high positions and the name von it's as i just told you it means it's the nobility and salomon that's the german word for solomon king solomon and who was king solomon was he a normal jaywalker king of the jaywalkers no of course not he was a king for god's sake he was the son of king david like the um, the savior starting with a J, who's going to save us all. He's coming down from the cross. He's going to save us all. And he's also from the house of David. You know, they all are. Eh? Promising us things for 2,000 years and never keeping a, a word. So don't hope too much on it, people. 
And King Solomon, it says in the Bible, he was married with the daughter of Pharaoh, right? So this guy, he, he's from the nobility, and so was Solomon, King Solomon. They're all pharaohs, and that's why he took the name of most likely one of his ancestors, right? Anyway, the nobility comes out of Pharaoh. So I think this is a direct line out of Pharaoh. And Wies, that's Swiss German, for the German word Weiss. And Weiss, it means white. So this means he's from the white house people. The Perhet of Pharaoh of Upper Egypt, who are more into the horizontal rule, whereas the Red House, the original aristocracy, they are more in the feudal vertical rule. So, and this is why he had a big position in the Republic, because that's horizontal here, yeah, Großrat. So, von Wies, it means. Solomon from the White House, or Solomon from the Per Hat. Just like the White House in America, in Washington, D.C., and America became the biggest horizontal New World Order rule in history and in the entire world. So it's all connected. Von Wies, vom Weißen Haus, yeah. Hat sie das verstanden alle, ja? Auch ihr Schweizer, Wies, ne? Ist ja Schweizerdeutsch, ja? And so here I could again only found, find it in German, um, but it doesn't matter, I will translate it for you. So you're all lucky that I can translate the German to you, because you won't find this anywhere else on the internet, right? Not even in German. So Escher, it's from the, the, the bloodline dynasty Asher vom Glas, which is the aristocracy, which you can see here. There's a coat of arms. And remember how he had this, um, together with his friend Solomon von Weiss, um, they founded this very dangerous uh, company about which i tell you more later on. So coming back to Solomon, King Solomon, here we see the seal of Solomon. It's not the jaywalker thing. It is the, um, it's also the symbol of the JJ base. I explained to you in um, Brighton what that means because I can't use the word for this. This is where the, the jaywalkers, where they have their center in the Middle East. Uh, this is how I can describe it. And these little dots on it here, and it's also here, it means it's uh, drops of blood. And this, this jar here, it's the grail, which I've, I've explained to you in my film, my first video, The Pharaoh Show. Though this means these blood drops here in the jar, they come out of the bloodline of King Solomon. That's why Solomon von Wies, who was a friend of this um, Asher, from glass. So again, this is the coat of arms of Asher from glass. Here we got the two pillars, uh, Yashin and Boaz, um, of the temple, which also belong to King Solomon. Here again, his his uh, the uh, star is the, um, uh, the the star of uh, of King Solomon, and here in the temple of King Solomon in Jerusalem, there were the two pillars, Yashin. And Boas. Well, here they are. Eh? It's all here. Eh? And, and here you've got this, uh, I think, oh, here, Heinrich Escher, 1685, from the family Escher. See, here already the name von um, Glass, it's already gone. And here, look, here you got this pharaonic. Um, Thing here, and he got this ring, a signet ring on his little finger to transmit an information, what the nobility always do. And this is like uh, what I explained you, King Solomon. You know, they got this royal, um, I, I don't recall the name. And look at his nose. You know, Europeans don't have noses like this. This is pharaonic. 
is another pharaoh, you know, with a big bump here on top of it, just like Pharaoh, Ramses the Great, and, and all of them, right? all of them. So, and here, well, we already seen this. This is uh, Hans Kaspar Escher, who founded the um, that uh, Nazi factory Escher V's. Very dangerous people. So I come back to this site uh, later on. Explain you that they have a lot of branches, you know, like here, Escher von Lux, and Escher von Binningen, here, here von Binningen. It's all Escher, and they're everywhere. It says, they're also in the USA. They're all over people. I've been telling you, there are one million Swiss Americans in the US, and they, uh, they rule the country. This extremely powerful Swiss Escher von Glas dynasty belongs to Pharaoh's aristocracy, also called the Pharistocracy, from Pharaoh's aristocracy. And they are already cited in historical documents in the year 1190 when a Jacob Escher was in official service of the Counts of Habsburg, against whom, in that year of 1291, the Knights Templars waged a war using Swiss peasants, whom they had trained militarily with crusader techniques and taking over the Habsburg vertical rule and founding Switzerland with its horizontal rule in the year 1291, and just two and a half months after the Crusades. So here it says Templar base, and this is the Swiss flag which almost looks like a swastika in the same colors of the Knights Templars, red and white. And here it says Death Dealers, which they basically are. From the moment onwards, a family has many branches and thus becoming very powerful. It is called a dynasty, which is the case with Escher from Glass who have a branch called Escher von Lux, and in the 14th century, Heinrich Escher von Glas married first with Margareta zum Tor, another aristocratic name. And after that, he married with Regula Manesse von Manek, also of the nobility with those long double names and the German von Part in between, indicating its nobility. The Basler branch from Basel, where the Bank of International Settlements is, for instance, so the Basler branch became Asher von Binningen, which is called the Daig, meaning the Dau in Swiss German, as this pharistocracy sticks together as the Dao. And if you pull the Dao, it will bounce back to where the whole lump is. And Gervasius Escher von Binningen became in 1655 Freiherr von Umkirch und Hoffenheim. Now, that really sounds aristocratic, does it now? From the beginning of the 17th century, the Escher vom Glas nobility split up into three bloodlines. One, the Pfauen Escher bloodline. Two, the Heinrich Escher bloodline. And three, a French Escher bloodline by Hans Jakob Escher 
Ram. And later on, the Fauen Escher and the Heinrich Escher bloodlines again split up into like a virus multiplying itself by splitting up into all <coughs> the time. So here it says Escher von Glas, nobility. It's a Swiss dynasty with slave drivers and Nazi bankers. So here you can see the textile industry. Here's the coat of arms. And this is what they did with people. And not only with Nubians, also with jaywalkers, with the Europeans and whatnot, also in the Americas. Just like the Swiss pharmaceutical companies, as I already explained to you, they are extremely dangerous and extremely powerful. And this is not the real faces of um, the octagon in the Alps. Forget this, eh? This here to the right, this is their real face and what they're doing. And this here is where they come from. And the Swiss is actually, they are like police dogs. You know, they're very good trained. They always, you know, I'm talking about the Swiss people, you know, the peasants. They're like police dogs. They're trained to protect their Swiss banks. And uh, they think it's clean and neutral. And they're really fanatic and um, really fascist ideas. And as soon as you've got another idea, even if you give all the proofs like Homie Ross, then you're gone. You know, because the Swiss police dogs, they protect their masters who are here in the middle. And if you say one wrong word, you end up upside down like the Nubian here or like they did with Homie Ross and his entire family. So here is what I just told you about all the branches of the Escher vom Glas. And here they were the Counts of Habsburg. And in 1190, they talk about Jacob Escher. And uh, here, Escher vom Lux, typical nobility. And he married with uh, or Escher vom Glas here, they, and uh, Heinrich, he married first with um, Margareta Tumtor, another nobility, and then he married with Regula Manessa von Maneck, again the nobility. This is all pure nobility. And here they talk about Escher von Binningen in Basel, where the Bank of International Settlements is, and they became the dike about which I'll, I'll tell you more in a moment. And here they be, he became uh, Freiherr zu Umkirch und Hoffenheim in the 17th century. Here, yeah, Rudolf Hescher, he was the Herr zu Dübelstein. You know, the Steinsies, they, they, they are the, Stein, the stone builders, right? And... Um, um, Escher Rahn, Jacob Escher Rahn, and uh, to Kuburg, Escher Wertmüller. They're all politicians, you know, they're all ruling, you know. Here, Konrad Escher von der Lind, nobility. Here, the famous Heinrich Escher, and the, Alfred Escher, the one who founded the Swiss bank uh, Credit Suisse. And here the company, Eshavis. And here you can see they were everywhere, you know, and more than they say. There's just the tip of the iceberg. Zurich, Bern, Italy, the north of Italy, it says here, France, Austria, Germany, and the US of A. Together with von Grafenried, of course, who even Laura Bush, she is a descendant of von Grafenried out of Switzerland which I already explained to you 12 years ago. So it's all in here, in German, unfortunately not in English, but you can just, you know, uh, 
copy paste and put it in the uh, the Google translation machine if you want to have it for yourself. And it, I mean, it's all here, you know, extremely ruthless families. They are, I mean, they're all based in Switzerland. So here is the Daig. In Swiss German, it means the Dow. Yeah, while Dow, a uh, Daig literally means Dow in Swiss German. And um, so I read it here for you. Daig is an expression common in Basel, and most people don't even know it. And the Deutschschweiz, and refers to a milieu consisting of wealthy families like Escher von Binningen from the Swiss city of Basel. These families had full civic rights. So, I mean, here we, we come to the origins of the Bank of International Settlements. Eh? In the then city-state since the High Middle Ages and are known for their particular idiosyncratic habits and a dialect distinct from that of the rest of the population. For, you know, the nobility, they're talking a little bit like that, yeah. For centuries, the dyke was a social, political and economic elite of Basel, although it remained closed off from the outside world. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'll let you read it yourself. And Basel is very, very powerful. I mean, the Bank of International Settlements are there. I'm not going to read it all for you, you know. So here, one of the defining char characteristics of the dyke milieu is its perceived need to separate itself from those not part of that milieu. This separation is intended to distance Basel's aristocracy both vertically from the middle classes as well as horizontally from the so-called newly rich. So it's not really for them to be, to be part of the dike. So being rich, the money is not the ingredient or the important uh, factor. The important factor is the bloodlines. And this is why they vertically, they seek their distance from the so-called newly rich, you see. They're just pure pharaohs. Pharaohs, nobility, the pharaohistocracy people. And I, I mean, the proofs are all here. Eh? So here you can see the Rhine in Basel. This is the Roche Tower. The ones who had the PCR machines ready just before the um, the pandemic, you know, they just needed a little pandemic, a global one, right, to get filthy, filthy rich, which they did. They got filthy rich, you know, they had two, 24 billion, which they gained through the, at least, and um, much, much more, you know, to buy their own factory back, you know, from Novartis. And they're all next to each other, you know, it's, not, it's one company. And this tower is really awful, you know. It, it really breaks up the the skyline, you know, of a, of a medieval town. It's really horrible. I mean, the, the people probably don't even like it, you know, the people there. But uh, what do you do against the dike? Yeah. So that means the dow. You know, if you pull the dow, you know, it ding, you know, like a like a rubber. It just it just goes back. Or like some alien sort of thing, you know. They found these metals, you know, area, what is it, 51 or something. They found these metals who just bounce back and they say, yeah, well, it was a weather balloon. Yeah, yeah, sure it was, yeah. The dyke people, especially the Swiss. Yeah, there are other languages, so probably, yeah, it's also in German here. Yeah. So here it is in German. Go go ahead and read it, Swissies. So this Escher von Glas, Swiss aristocratic dynasty, is a real conglomerate, just like the Swiss Holderman dynasty, about whom you can find out in these videos that were censored by YouTube and to be seen here on Brighton. Remember Bob Holderman, 
the main instigator of the Watergate scandal, leading to the indictment and consequent impeachment of US President Richard Nixon and orchestrated by a bunch of very powerful Swiss families of the Swiss dyke conglomerate spreading its claws all over the world and in this case all over the United States. So here's part one, Switzerland's powerful Haldeman dynasty descendant Elon Musk anagram loan scum oh. On my channel, Gure on uh, Brighton. And here, part two Switzerland's powerful Haldeman dynasty with Swiss Bob Haldeman creating Watergate scandal by Planet of the Alps. So here's the channel. And here you can see Bob Haldeman, and here you can see the other Haldeman descendant, Elon Musk from his mother's side. And of course, you can be sure that this Asher from Glass dynasty who are in the US, that they're also part of this uh, conspiracy, the Watergate conspiracy behind Bob Haldeman. And of course, we had uh, J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, I think at the same time, there was the CIA, Alan Dulles uh, from his Geneva family, um they're all behind it people very powerful dynasties and it all comes out of the knights templars who were part of the fair aristocracy and their base is swaziland so here is my brighton channel here it says brighton free uh, freedom to speak and here is the name gure and then here again gure I've got a lot of subscribers, 273, <laughs> it's not very much. The, uh, the icon is a cat with an enormous shadow of a lion. So be aware of the cat, eh? you never know. And then you just scroll down. You know, there's a lot of deleted videos like this one for the New Zealanders and the Australians going out and see it. Also deleted and much, much more deleted and just scroll down and okay there we are bob holderman there he is and here the other holderman do they look alike the ears are the same look the same ears and all that mm, yeah i should make a video about it and make have a closer look maybe i'll do that one of these days and there are many more videos um yeah browse all videos okay there we go and um here yeah, number two there are some more deleted videos here of mine uh like this one was deleted this is deleted this got deleted here this got deleted this one got deleted so it's my uh where my channel with a um, where I put a lot of deleted videos, I couldn't find them all anymore. Most of them are lost. But anyway, go and have a look at the Holdemans. In the 19th century, there was Escher von der Lind bloodline or branch, and just look at that big and most of all long pharaonic aristocratic nose like pharaoh Ramses the great or king louis the 14th the sun king the branches of this dangerous swiss dynasty have also infiltrated italy france austria germany and the us where they have rooted and taken key positions in society. One of this dynasty by the name of Felix Escher vom Glas was even called the politician of the aristocrats. 
to have their own politicians. Well, I mean, all politicians, all aristocrats. You know. So this one here, I already showed it to you before, is Hans Konrad Escher von der Lindt. And look at the nose. This is King Louis XIV, the Sun King. And this is a mummy of Ramses the Great. Look at his hair. You know, it's a ginger. All these pharaohs, all these mummies, they, they, got, they got ginger hair, you know. So, and look at this big nose and so long, you know, very long. If you imagine with all the, the flesh on it, you know, it's, it's and this one too, big, you know. And it doesn't stop here. Normal people, you know, Europeans, you know, it's, there's this going in here, you know, and then you've got the nose. But this goes all the way like a bridge. It goes all the way straight, you know. And look at the skull here. It's It's like, what is it? 45 degrees going backwards and this one too and the same nose you know it's it's the same dynasty and, and look at the eyes here and here this is the fair aristocracy and their base is Switzerland, like here Escher vom Glas and this is their branch uh, Escher von der Lindt they got the same faces they got all key positions politicians one crime after the other uh, these are our masters so here once more there's a website here Escher from Glass and here is this uh, guy again I just showed him he's got the same profile as King Louis the 14th the Sun King the same nose and profile as um, Pharaoh Ramses the Great and um, so this is the bloodline, as you can read here, Escher von der Lindt. And um, so here's the whole, again, the whole picture. And look at the eyes. It, it looked also very similar to Louis the Fourteenth and the, the angle of his, uh, of his, of his front here. You know, normally, you know, Europeans, it's like this, you know, going like up, like, you know, not like bent like that or in an angle. So, and here was the other one, Felix Escher vom Glas. And here it says, Politiker der Aristokraten, a politician for the aristocrats or and of the, of the aristocrats you know they don't do these things anymore you know it's 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 so obvious but they tried these sort of things you know like in the 19th century and uh well this is more like the 18th century and uh it's probably not a good strategy you know it get, things are getting too obvious so in, the, in these days they still did it you know no, that would be too obvious, and they, you know, they want to hide all their things, you know. And here, one more time, the coat of arms. Yashin, Boas, the jar, the, the grail where the blood is in, there are even blood drops here. And the, um, the star of uh, the seal of Solomon. So that means the blood of Solomon in here. It's so obvious. So here you can see the whole page of Hans Konrad Escher von der Lindt. And here is the crest of um, Hans Konrad Escher, which is almost the same. You know, you got the same grail with these blood drops on it, but it, the other one looked more like blood drops. And the Seal of Solomon, which is going into the grail, meaning um, th this is where they come from you know king solomon a pharaoh married with the daughter of pharaoh i mean they betrayed themselves with their coat of arms and their crests and all that and um there he is again this is when he was older you know you know the the it's the nose it's going straight you know 
into the skull here. You know, it's not going the nose like here, in, and then back here. No, it's just one, it's like a bridge. You know? And they all have this. You see this? Look. Same nose like um, King Louis. He even got coins and all that. Oh, isn't that clean? You know, here are the, uh, this is probably the, um, uh, these are the seven hills. I told, I told you about the Kurfürsten in the, in the, um, the end times, the apocalypse of John. There were the seven, um, hills that are also seven kings and Kurfürsten, that is a king. So, you know, these are the masters and then they got like 50% probably. Um, Voltaire, he said once, you know, 50% of the Swiss, they live in paradise and the other 50% they live in hell. And, um, so the masters, they live in paradise and the, uh, the, the dumb slaves, they live in hell. And, uh, so, but the Swiss, the people, the dumb slaves, you know, they're, they're like police dogs, you know, they, they, they will always protect their masters and the system, their banks, their incredible criminal pharmaceutical companies, um, Nazism, slavery, the, the Swiss police dog people, they, they are trained, you know, over 800 years being dominated by, by these pharaohs and by the Knights Templar, the Knights Templar system, with the Oni Swaki Malipense. Um, yeah, the, this this is definitely all the, um, the 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 Seven Hills stuff. Oh yeah, it says Eshero. Hmm. Oh. Okay, the masters. So look at the profiles, look at the noses. You know, it's the same as pharaohs and the and the big kings of the uh, feudal system. So the aristocratic Asher from Glass dynasty of pharaohs nobility in Switzerland are the founders of that very powerful and very criminal Swiss Nazi bank called Credit Suisse. And this pharaohistocratic dynasty were also slave drivers in the Americas, as pharaoh's nobility has always been into slavery. As I told you so, all the time that pharaoh's nobility are the ones behind the swiss nazi banks as the knights templars who founded banking and switzerland come out of the nobility and were all sons of french aristocrats so this is what is called a uh, this engraving from ancient egypt is called a petroglyph so the hieroglyphs are the letters and the words and the images are are the petroglyphs like this one here so this is when he was alive this one here so this is a depiction of ramses the great when he was alive so look at this nose you know, when he was alive, which is exactly the same as Louis, uh, Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, and also the the skull. You know, like having an angle, you know, like forty-five degrees almost, going like this. You know, and not like up, like or a little bit like that. You know, um, so ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt, and here in Europe. They conquered us a couple of thousand years later, but they're still the same ones. And here it says, of course, pharistocracy, 
the aristocracy from Pharaoh. It's still the same. Nothing has changed. And it gets even worse. What this Escher vom Glas aristocratic dynasty has perpetrated during World War II. So that Swiss Escher Wies company, founded by the all powerful Escher vom Glas dynasty in the year 1805, with machines for the textile industry to wave the cotton from the Americas obtained by slavery was during World War II a Nazi company using concentration camp inmates for their Swiss factory in Ravensburg from the infamous Buchenwald concentration camp. Thus again Swissy using slave labour just as in the old days during the cotton picker days in the Americas, making Swissy extremely wealthy. It seems that neutral, clean and innocent Switzerland uses slave labour whenever they can. Slave labour is good for business, is the Swiss motto. So here it says, famous Swiss motto, slave labour is good for business. So I'll read it for you here. Switzerland's contract kids, Swiss slave children. Look, the poor kids don't even have shoes on. They did the same with their own Swiss children as they did with the Nubians in the America, you know slavery with the cotton pickers and as they did with concentration camp uh, people prisoners also slaves and as you know by now the Swissies had even hundreds of thousands of their own children enslaved called the contract kids or die Verdinkinder in Swiss German. Just look it up. Uh, I'll show it to you. I've experienced these Swissies as a soulless product by Pharaoh and they are not a real people because a people comes in one skin color and one language only and not like the Swiss in four different languages. The criteria and characteristics of a people are that they have one national language in common and only one skin color. And this is not me who invented this. This is official. These are the criteria that make a people. <laughs> I cannot change it. Eh? Therefore, the Swissies cannot be a people, but they are a product put together by their masters who rule the whole country after they founded it in 1291. So here are the, the children slaves. Here it says children slaves, Pharaoh's Swiss product. This, this is how they make a product. You know. The poor kids don't even have shoes. And these were, this is probably from the 50s, you know, when there were cameras. Can you imagine like in this 19th century and all that, you know. And who ruled Switzerland in those days of the Swiss slave children, which lasted until 1989. Yes. The slave driver families, Escher from Glas, the Dyke dynasties, the Haldeman dynasty, etc., who are, of course, 
also responsible for this tragedy here. It's time to stop him, people. So here it says, the Haldeman dynasty and Asher from Glass dynasty, uh, and there are many, many others. So in this same time, when they did this in the Americas, you know, with the Nubians, and when they did it in the Second World War with the Jaywalkers and concentration camp inmates, don't you think they are the same ones who are who took these slave children here? Eh? And look at their faces. They don't these children don't look happy at all, eh? They they grew old very quickly. You know, that this same hard faced faces like in concentration camps, you know. So here you can read about it in English. Vadin Kinder, it says contract children were children in Switzerland who were taken from their parents. And, uh, but, you know, the, this here is, is in quite very civilized speech here, you know, and it's, it's barely scratching the surface, you know, as usual in Switzerland. It's probably censored, you know, all the time, yeah. And, um, and the funny thing is, you know, even many of these children's slaves, they would always um, protect the Swiss system and protect Switzerland and uh, protect the Swiss banks and, and the, whole, the, the, whole, the whole Nazi thing, you know, which is they're completely indoctrinated and brainwashed and um, there's not much to do about these, you know, it's, um, it needs a reset, yeah, let's say a positive reset. This here is a genuine color picture from 1941, where you see a German in Russia burning the, down the houses in, in, of civilians with a Swiss Flamethrower by Escher Wies. So here it says Swiss flamethrowers burning Russian civilians alive. And the Swiss Nazi company Escher Wies manufactured flamethrowers for the genocide on the Russian people, burning down Russian villages with the people inside. And in fact, Operation Barbarossa got financed by the Swissies in 1941 with 1 billion Swiss francs at the time, which is trillions of dollars today. And WDR, I show that in a minute, is Westdeutsche Rundfunk and is one of the main German state TV stations with serious information. So I guess with those 1 billion Swiss francs, a lot of Swiss made flamethrowers were bought to burn the Ruskies and their children alive, which actually happened like that killing 27 million Russians in World War II by the Nazis. And this is the true essence of Switzerland. And the incredibly criminal Escher from Glass dynasty. And just think about that for a moment, how Vladimir Putin the actual president of Russia is doing business with the Asha from Glass dynasty and their Credit Suisse bank, while that same Swiss family made the Nazi flamethrowers to burn Russian civilians and their children alive. Just think about that for a moment and realize how distorted it all gets 
concerning this neutral, clean, and innocent pharaonic base in the Alps. So here you see the poor Russian woman here, everything burning, everything down. Here the Germans here with their Swiss flamethrowers, everything burning down. So here it says Swiss flamethrowers for the genocide on the Russians. So here it says WDR and here a one. So that's the first German television, the Westdeutsche Rundfunk, the uh, West uh, German uh, uh, radio uh, broadcast or the West German broadcast, yeah, radio broadcast. And here you see those Swiss helmets here, the uh, Swiss here in the in the Alps, uh, with Swiss rifles. They're fairly good. And um, the article is in German, but um, you'll understand. So here it says that Hitler in 1941 for the Operation Barbarossa, he got one billion Swiss francs. Eine Milliarde, that's one billion Schweizer Franken, Swiss francs. He got that for, uh, for the Russian uh, campaign, the uh, Russland Feldzug. So um, if you want to read the whole article, you know, you can, um, if I won't forget, I'll put it in the link, in the links. I put the link in the description and you can run it through the, uh, through the Google Translate. So there, there's a lot more to see here. Yeah, also on February 23rd in 1937, uh, the Swiss, they promised Hitler that uh, Switzerland would never attack Germany. So he had all his, his hands free to do whatever, you know. And that's because of the banks, you know, uh, Credit Suisse, um, family, the dynasty, Escher Wies, Escher from from glass, Asha Visa was the uh, the company, and uh, criminal, very criminal. So, I mean, this German, the first German broadcast here, State TV. I mean, they're serious, you know. Uh, not everything is bad. I mean, I don't like media very much. But this is not so much like, um, you know, the media with a lot of, um, how should I put it? Um, oh, I can't find a word really. Uh, but, you know, they've got, they got more like serious programs, you know, about, you know, history and um, uh, they're fairly good. I mean, this is really good, what's here. So here it says, February 23rd, 1937. Um, and I was the other way around. So Hitler, he guarantees the neutrality of Switzerland. So, okay. So the Swiss had their, their hands free. Yeah. Additionally, the Swiss aristocratic factory, Escher Wies, by the aristocracy of the Escher von Glas and Solomon von Wies nobility was helping the Nazis to create the Nazi atom bomb by the manufacturer of turbines for Norsk Hydro who were making heavy water in Norway needed for the Nazi nuclear weapons. Interesting enough, my grandfather, who was an officer in the British naval intelligence during World War II, possibly helped to destroy the Norsk Hydro plants in Norway, as naval intelligence worked closely together with the SOE for Special Operations Executive and 30AU Assault Unit. But I'm not sure. 
because he died in 1942 under very suspicious circumstances. Interesting though, that 80 years later and two generations later in my family, his grandson is still dealing with this very same enemy in the form of the Escher V's Swiss Nazi company. So here you see the bomb. Here, Mr. Hitler. And here it says Escher V's Swiss made. And this guy, he was a Swiss sleeper agent financed by the first, uh, by the Swiss general Ulrich Weller Jr who came out of the German high nobility of uh, von Bismarck. His mother was a von Bismarck. It's always the fair aristocracy all over. And guess who was the CEO director of Escher V's Swiss Nazi company in Ravensburg? Answer the father of Klaus Schwab, by the name of Eugen Wilhelm Schwab. Where this incredibly dangerous Swiss family was already busy in the great Nazi reset, trying to make the Nazi atom bomb and resetting Nazi concentration camp inmates until their death by exhaustion and whatnot. The ancient connection between the Escher family and the Klaus Schwab family establishes all the proofs that we're dealing here with a conglomerate who are executing a genuine long time conspiracy against mankind. And this pharaonic conglomerate conspiracy always operates from out of their base in the Alps, Switzerland. The grandmother of Klaus Schwab, by the name of Marie Lappert, was born in Kirchberg, Switzerland. And the mother of Klaus Schwab, by the name of Erika Ebrecht, was also Swiss. And here it says the Swiss connection. Because this guy here, he was a Swiss sleeper agent financed by the Swiss. And this one here, Swiss. So, the Swiss connection. So, some information once more on Klaus Schwab. And Schwab was born to Eugen Wilhelm Schwab and Erika Ebrecht in Ravensburg. You see how near it is to the Swiss border. Just. His parents had moved from Switzerland to Germany during the Third Reich in order for his father to assume the role of director at Escher V's AG, an industrial company and contractor for then Nazi Germany. So that was the company his father, Eugen Wilhelm Schwab, was uh, the director of, about which I just told you a couple of things. So you can read it here yourself. Oh look, he's a Knight Commander of the Order of Saint Michael and Saint George. Uh, this, you know, Saint Michael is the this the the Saint Protector of the Mafia, and Saint George is the Saint Protector of the um, of the Knights Templars. And this is what the British Royal House they have um, on their breast. Yeah. He's got a lot of things here. 
Oh, here in French, but it doesn't matter. You can you can read the names here because it, it wasn't in the English uh, section. Here it says his father, Eugen Schwab, whom I just mentioned, is the son of Gottfried Schwab. And the Swiss, Swisses, it means Swiss, Marie Lappert, born in Kirchberg in 1875. And his mother, sa mère, Ella Suisses Erika Ebrecht is the Swiss Erika Ebrecht. So it's it's all Swiss. Oh, extremely dangerous. Very powerful conglomerate and uh, dynasty. Here, I read it for you here. In the pre war years, of the 1930s leading up to German annexation of Poland, Ravenburg's Escherwies factory, there we go, now managed directly by Klaus Schwab's father, Eugen Schwab, continued to be the biggest employer in Ravensburg. Not only was the factory a major employer in the town, but Hitler's own Nazi party awarded the Escherwies Ravensburg branch the title of National Socialist Model Company, while Schwab was at the helm. The Nazis were potentially wooing the Swiss company for cooperation in the coming war, and their advances were, advances were eventually reciprocated. Ravensburg was an anomaly in wartime Germany, as it was never targeted by any Allied airstrikes. The presence of the Red Cross and a rumoured uh, agreement with various companies, including Escherwies, saw the Allied forces publicly agree to not target the southern German town. You see, even the Allies didn't bomb it, you know, it was all, it's all a setup, you know. It's a conspiracy. It was not classified as a significant military target, you know, of course not throughout the war, and for that reason, the town still maintains many of its original features. However, much darker things were afoot in Ravensburg once the war began. Eugen Schwab continued to manage the National Socialist Model Company for Escherwies, and the Swiss company would aid the Nazi Wehrmacht, produce significant weapons of war as well as as more basic armaments. The Escherwies company, you know, and it's next to the Swiss border, you know, so they can get all, they can get all the goodies from Switzerland uh, into that company. And then it seems that it comes all out of that company, but no, it was all produced in Switzerland, I tell you. I'll show you it on the map afterwards. The Escherwies company, and if it was not the whole products, you know, coming out of Switzerland, which happened, then, you know, the metals and because Germany couldn't import any more things, but the Swiss still could do this, you know. So this is what happened. The Asher Wies company was a leader in large turbine technology for hydroelectric dams and power plants, but they also manufactured parts for German fighter planes. They were also intimately involved in much more sinister projects happening behind the scenes, which, if completed, could have changed the outcome of the war. Uh, I'll open up a new window because it cuts something off here. From this point, the article traces how some of Escherwies hydro turbine technology made it into the Nazi atom bomb project via Norsk heavy water production plants in Norway. Here the article goes a bit uh, awry, claiming that heavy water was vital for the production of plutonium for that project. As I've out outlined in my book, Reich of the Black Sun, the German project, while it knew of the possibility of plutonium. Well, okay, well, I, I'll let you read it yourself and um, just, Punch pause. So they were working on the bomb, making flamethrowers, parts for um, fighter planes, etc., etc. And it was the father 
of uh, Klaus uh, Schwab. Already in the um, in the great reset business with an atom bomb, eh? And uh, this is interesting. They, they, you know, they compare him with um, Stra Stavro Blofeld, Spectre from the James Bond movies. And of course, yeah, it's all based on. Uh, I mean. Uh, Ian Fleming, he was uh, he was working in during the war and that line of um, things. Uh. Ravensburg, Germany, where Klausi was born and where the Escher Wies Nazi company is situated, lies right next to Switzerland in the so-called Swiss buffer zone of the ethnic Swiss all around Switzerland, when during the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648, Swiss mercenaries murdered the entire population around Switzerland to the last child, so the Swissies could take over repopulate in order to make that strategical buffer zone around the main base of all evil. Another one of those Klaus Schwab great resets, so to say. So here, Ravensburg is the um, Wies Nazi company. So here is Switzerland, here's Geneva, here's Bern, the capital, here's Basel with the Bank of International Settlements, here's the border, like this, this is Bodensee, and here's Austria, and the border goes like this, Liechtenstein, and here Varese, Locarno, this is Italy, uh, Zermatt, Matterhorn, uh, so that is Switzerland, right? Eh? And here's Ravensburg. It's right at the Swiss border. And this is all around Switzerland, which I already explained to you, is the Swiss buffer zone. And here Schaffhausen. Uh, in this area, I infiltrated the Swiss octagon. And you see, it's right next to Ravensburg as well, you know. So during the war, you know, um, the Germans, they couldn't get many, you know, resources for the um, ground resources you know for the uh, for the war industry like you know metals and, and all sort of things so they just got it from Switzerland, you know into Ravensburg I mean I mean that only Germ the Germans and the Swiss involved I mean who's who's going to to check that out eh? and even Complete weapon systems already, uh, like Erlikon in Zurich, you know, the um, the flak cannons and everything. It went directly here to Ravensburg. Uh, you know, guns that were manufactured in Switzerland, you know, directly here. Um, so the buffer zone, yeah, around Switzerland, which is the base of the pharistocracy. So here is the father of Klaus Schwab, Eugen Wilhelm Schwab. And he's, he's a bit older already, and um, who was the director of that very dangerous Nazi, Swiss Nazi factory, uh, Escher Wies, by the um, uh, Escher vom Glas um, pharistocracy. So, the father, like 20 years after the war, so a little bit older. And here, a bit old, uh, younger, and I must say the alleged father of uh, Klaus Schwab, um, Eugen Wilhelm Schwab, because there are a lot of rumors about it, and um, I just couldn't verify it. So, but if you look at the face, it's, um, 
Yeah, it's very likely this really is the father and the um, the director of that Nazi factory, you know, keeping concentration camp inmates and uh, killing people. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a long time ago. It's 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 quite hard. So I say, I repeat, these are the alleged pictures during the wartime of Eugen Wilhelm. Uh, Schwab. But uh, one thing is sure, he was the director of the Escherwies company in Ravensburg. So here you can see father and son or son and father. This is Klaus Schwab and we can all see the resemblance and here is the alleged uh, Eugen Wilhelm Schwab, the father. And um, he must have worn some some Nazi uniform in these days. Eh? That's, of course, that's sure. But again, I couldn't verify it. So, but I think it's uh, it must be um, pretty authentic. Yeah. But I must say, alleged. It's an alleged picture. So I hear some more about it. We pick up the story with Schwab's father, Eugen, a manager for a Swiss German company, Escher Wies, in Schwab's hometown of Ravensburg. The allegations are revealing. I'll let you read it yourself. Just punch pause. And uh, yeah, Eugen Schwab continued to manage the National Socialist Model Company. You know, great reset stuff, eh? For Escher Wies. So now you know where the name Escher comes from, eh? And where the name Wies is coming from. You won't, you won't find that here in these sort of articles. And I think it's important because you have to know, I mean, where does the company come from? That's very, very important. because. They're not just ordinary Swiss, it's the aristocracy. So this is what I, you know, wanted to add to all this here, where this, where it all comes from. And, um, well, okay, I'll let, I'll let you read it yourself. And, uh, you know, 3,600 forced laborers. They had the, their own little concentration camp. Yeah, it says, Escher Wies maintained a small special camp for forced laborers on the factory premises. That's, that's the Escher from Glass family. You know, they did it with uh, Nubians in the America, the cotton pickers, children, slaves. Uh, Second World War slaves here, you name it. And it goes on and it goes on. Now the good old son is, you know, doing the same thing with his great reset. Uh, this is a dynasty, you know, they're, they're all, they're all together. Conspiracies are very real. And related to the, as I said, to the concentration camp slaves, um, you know, Switzerland uh, was very, very much involved uh, into the slavery, um, into, um, into the Americas. We t I'll read it for you a little bit. We tend to associate the history of slavery with European ports that specialize in slaving. Cadiz, uh, Bristol, Liverpool, Nantes and Middleburg are cities that spring to mind. The French-speaking city of Neuchâtel in Switzerland is situated on the shoreline of Lake Neuchâtel within the canton of the same name in the mountainous Jura region. Not a port in sight, in spite of being a landlocked country without colonies of its own. This and other Swiss cities profited from the Atlantic slave trade. It's incredible, you know. A lack of colonial ambitions helped the Swiss gain 
a working relationship with Europe's main empire builders. Swiss mercenaries were taken on by the Dutch and British East India companies. I already told you about this 12 years ago. From the beginning of the 17th century in 1800, when black slaves on the island of Hispaniola revolted against their French colonial masters, Napoleon sent 600 Swiss troops to fight them. Well, they, 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 they were, the Swissies were deep in it. But then again, oh, here it is, the family of Alfred Escher, a major fig figure in the development of modern Switzerland, ran a plantation run with slave labor. And Alfred Escher, that's the one who founded the Swiss Credit Suisse. By that time, the name was, um, uh, well, I had another name already, so you read it yourself. There's a lot of names, you know. It's just too much, too many names to, yeah. But anyway, it's it's all in the in these. Uh, this clean, neutral, innocent country. <laughs> they don't give a damn about human rights. And Homie Ross knows all about it and his children. They terrorized me for 25 years. That's a quarter of a century. And here's another article, how Switzerland profited from colonialism. Well, Nazism was also colonialism. Oh. It's it's just another name, you know, they just change names and jackets and oh. the Swiss connection is very real, very dangerous and extremely ruthless. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covered means for expanding its sphere of influence on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. Hey, Swissy, I know what you did.